Hi everyone, today in this video we're going to be taking a look at what the chi-squared test for association is. Now you might have heard of the chi-squared test already in a number of different areas. Um, in genetics, for example, we use this to kind of compare the expected frequencies that we get with a Punnett square versus what we actually get in terms of real numbers when crossing uh, corn varieties or uh, Drosophila flies or anything that we're trying to um, understand genetics for. In this situation, the calculations are the same. We're still doing a chi-squared test, but the way that we generate some of the numbers is a little bit different. So if you can recognize what this diagram means, this is supposed to represent kind of quadrat sampling. So for example, when scientists are studying an area, they can't actually count up every single organism that's in there. So they do these random little squares and boxes called quadrats. I talked about that in a previous video as well too. So once you collect all your data, you can analyze it with a chi-square test for association and you just interpret that data a little bit differently. So just some main points and then we're going to go through a fully worked example which will make it a lot more easier to understand I think. So this type of data when you're collecting data using tally charts where you're going around an area you look in this box you're like okay there is this type of seaweed there uh, add a tally mark. Okay there's this type of seaweed there as well add a tally mark in that column and then you'll go around and then if there's not then you don't add tally marks if there are then you add more. So in this case we're using it for tally charts for example we're looking for the presence or absence of a type of species recorded from a large number of quadrats. So we're going to move this little box in different places and that's going to be generated uh, randomly. So for example, if we're looking at two types of seaweeds in a particular uh, ecosystem, then we can be looking at maybe 50 total quadrats and every quadrat we'll go to we're going to mark down if this type of seaweed is there and if this type of seaweed is there so in this example here the two types of seaweed are fucus vesiculosis and fucus serratus all right Awesome. And then you create a table basically and then this is a, just a summary of the table using sample data. So of the 50 quadrats we've looked at, for example, let's interpret this. That means in fifth, out of the 50 that were there, the 50 quadrats that we looked at, in six of them we found both types of seaweed. Um, in nine of them there were none of these types of seaweed in there. Um, in 15 of them the fucus serratus was there, but we couldn't see fucus vesiculosis. So we're just kind of uh, trying to find out all the data that's actually there and compile it together into one clear table. So in summary, before we do our worked example, we're creating a contingency table. That's what this is right here, where we collect all of our data. We're going to calculate the expected frequencies. I'll show you how to do that. These are the actual numbers, right? So we have to calculate what the expected frequencies would be based on the total totals in each of these columns here. We're going to calculate the magic chi-squared value. This is after all a chi-squared test. And then we have to determine something called the degrees of freedom, which is a little bit confusing. For now, just use this formula. Um, you can look it up and try to explain this to yourself. It's basically the number of independent variables that are available, and then you have to subtract any intermediate steps in between. Um, I still find that very hard to explain and understand and it's just not worth the effort for now to understand how to actually calculate this but understand that you need to you need to find something called the degrees of freedom which is basically the uh, number of variables that you can work with so we can understand how to compare this chi-squared value that we're actually calculating Here's the crazy looking formula, well, that's just how we're going to calculate it. But when we actually do the sample, you're going to see that this is not as scary as it looks. This is just the symbol for chi squared. That's the value we're looking for. This just means sum. And then these are just the frequencies of the observed and the expected value. You do a little bit of squaring and dividing, and then you end up with your total value that you'll use and compare to something called a critical value. If you've done any other types of statistics like t-tests, then the analysis of it will be somewhat similar so that shouldn't be too foreign okay let's go and look at our example here's our data again uh, this is our contingency table so I've already explained what these values actually mean it's data that we've collected when we're out here's the fucus vesiculosis here's the fucus serratus if you need to pause the video and kind of make sure you understand what this table means first before we move on um, that would probably be a good idea now how do we calculate the expected frequencies? Well here's a simple formula. You take the row total 
and then multiply it by the column total and divide it by the grand total. So let me show you how we're going to do that really quickly. So row total here is 21, right? 15 plus 6. Row total here is 29. Let's get the column totals. 20 plus 6 is 26, and then we have 24. What's the grand total? It's going to be 50. So if I want to calculate the expected frequency for this box, then what I need to do is I need to multiply 21, which is the row total, by 26, which is the column total, and divide that answer by 50. And it turns out if I do that, I get 10.92. Do that same thing over here, 21 times 24 divided by 50. Oops, I did the wrong box. Then I get 10.08. Repeat the same process here. Now I have my expected frequencies, which are here in red, and then my observed frequencies, which were the actual data that I collected, are here in black. Now. This is the table that I would do in a, in a quick uh, Excel spreadsheet or whatever spreadsheet. So look at what I've done. If I take here my observed values, 6, 15, 20, 9, 6, 15, 29. Here are my expected values that I just calculated using this formula up here. So they're directly underneath, 6 to 10.92. 6 directly underneath, 10.92. The next step in my formula is I take O minus E observed minus expected. I do that. It's okay if we get negative numbers because in the next step we're going to square this. So it turns out in the next step if I take the O minus E and then square it, then these are the values that I get. And then if I divide these values, so the next step is take whatever's in this column and divide it by the original expected frequency. So I'm going to take, for example here, 24.2064 and divide it by 10.92 and then I get these numbers here. I've left all the decimal places in there. It's best to try and be as accurate as possible to get closest to the final value, but you can still round that off to uh, maybe three significant figures. So now that I have all of this, look back at my original formula. The chi-squared value is equal to the sum of all of these things. So now if I add these four numbers together, I'm going to get my magic chi-squared value, which is 7.96. I'm almost done. I've calculated my value, but now I need to actually interpret it and compare it to some final critical values to determine if these results are actually significant or not significant. So how do I figure out what this critical value is? Well, you'll always have a table that you can look up. Just look for chi-squared test for association critical values, and you'll get a table like this. Uh, usually this table will be a lot longer, and it might actually go all the way down with lots more degrees of freedom. And we're looking for the 95% significance level here. So we have to use this value of 1 minus 0 0.95. So we're looking for the 0 0.05 value. That's what you'll usually be looking for in these significance tables. Now how do I know which degrees of freedom to actually use? Now in the previous slide you might have to go back. I don't want to press the up arrow many times and go all the way back but it's m minus 1 multiplied by n minus 1 and the answer is very simple. So m is just the number of uh, columns and then n is the number of rows. So if you do two, two columns minus 1 which is 1, multiplied by 2 rows minus 1, you get 1 times 1. So the number of degrees of freedom is 1. So we're looking for this critical value here, which is 3.841. So now I just have to compare my chi-squared value with the critical value. Note which one is larger. In this case, chi-squared is greater than the critical value. And the last part is interpreting it. So if your chi-squared value is larger than the critical value, actually in most statistical tests, if your statistical test value is greater than the critical value, then that means your results are statistically significant. So here I've said since 7.96 is greater than 3.841, we therefore conclude that the results are statistically significant. So you've gotten through kind of two of the three steps necessary to analyze this. So the first step is which value is greater? The second step is, is it significant? And then the third step is interpreting that with respect to your original question that you're actually asking here. So what this means is that because the results are statistically significant, it means they're different enough that the observed results, our numbers that we got here, are different enough from the expected results that we calculated using this formula up here to conclude that something is up. It's not just totally random distribution. So there is some kind of 
uh, relationship going on. Either they're keeping each other away, they tend not to grow together, or they're growing together. So we have to interpret it with regards to the original question. So for here, our best kind of conclusive statement we can say is that because these guys are not actually matching up with what we mathematically expect, we can say that the two species of algae tend not to occur together. So we're not finding them kind of uh, both present in these places. They tend to be uh, where the others are not. So maybe there is some kind of competitive relationship between them, which makes sense if you are a plant species, you're actually trying to uh, maximize the amount of nutrients that you can have for yourself. So there's a lot of other videos out there about chi-square tests. This is a specific one called the chi-square test for association. So you got to be careful about that when you're actually using this for genetics or for simple probability questions. I think I made one a long time ago about flipping a coin or um, Channing Tatum versus Zac Efron. I don't know if those guys are still relevant nowadays. It's more about the new Spider-Man guy. Yeah, he's cool. All right, good luck.